Hello again, everybody. It's episode number 216 of Patriots Beat on the CLNS Media Network. You can find us at www.clnsmedia.com. You can follow us on Twitter at CLNS Media and also follow me at TRAGS, T-R-A-G-S. You can follow us uh, also on Facebook. Don't forget to look there, facebook.com slash CLNS Media. It gives me great honor and privilege to welcome our guest for episode 216. It's a longtime friend uh, on the Patriots beat and a one-time reporter of my daughter playing for the Aqua Sox in the town of Lincoln. You don't think I'd ever forget, do you, Mike? Mike That's Reese great. of an ESPN NFL Nation reporter, of course. You know I'm covering the Patriots for a long time for the Boston Globe, Reese's Pieces, and now uh, for several years, reporter analyst for ESPNBoston.com. Of course, that's where you can find him right now, uh, working, covering the Patriots as well as anybody uh, in the world. That's Mike Reese. Obviously, follow him on Twitter at Mike Reese. Mike, welcome to the show. Trags, it's great to be on with you. We should tell everyone uh, that was the year 2005, and yep. I was working at the Boston Globe and their Globe West, uh, you know, uh, department, and I was out covering a local story. I want to say it was on the idea that, that youth sports, people get trophies, you know, and right. if I remember, um, you know, should everyone get a trophy or something along those lines. And so I was out in the youth sports arena, and uh, we bumped into each other. That was a lot of fun. It was, and I will have you also know, Mike, that was the only year that uh, Janie held a baseball bat in her hands. That was her only year of T-ball. So uh, in the town of Lincoln, you caught her. Uh, she's now a, um, a an accomplished swimmer, I can brag a little bit, uh, for Lincoln Sudbury High School. Looking forward, can you believe it, Mike? She's looking forward to college next year, and that's what my fall has, summer and fall has been filled with, are a lot of college visits. Absolutely fantastic, and that's that's big time. Congratulations, Tragzy. Nothing like that. No, no, there isn't. We got one more in the pipeline, and Emma, and she's a freshman in in high school. So, uh, in between, we're covering the New England Patriots, of course. And Mike, this team is three and two, and uh, obviously they they beat Tampa Bay and uh, at Tampa at Raymond James Stadium last Thursday night. And uh, the comparisons are certainly there for the two thousand uh, and four Patriots. <clears throat> excuse me the two excuse me the 2003 patriots and the 2014 patriots started out 2 and 2 and eventually uh, won Super Bowls those seasons. Um, and most recently in 2014, they really got embarrassed on Can- by Kansas City uh, on that Monday night game, came back onto Cincinnati, beat up on the Bengals, and they were uh, off and rolling. They are 3 and 2, but I don't get the sense yet that they are close to finding their rhythm. Do you do you agree, Mike? I do agree, and I think one of the things that I heard Tom Brady say made a lot of sense. He said, you know, this isn't the time to sort of look for definitive answers from a standpoint of, like, would you judge a boxing match after four rounds? Or, you know, how would you assess a marathon at the seven-mile mark? And that's how he compared where they are right now, you know, in the football world, if you will. So, Um, As a person reporting on the team or a fan following the team, would you have liked to see a little more consistency, maybe a little more decisiveness with their performance? Absolutely. Does that mean they can't get there? Absolutely not. They can get there. It's just taking them a little bit longer than maybe many of us assumed it would. Obviously, you mentioned Tom Brady, uh, Mike, and I think anybody watching this team right now, and you wrote about this on ESPNBoston.com today, as a matter of fact, um, as we uh, record this on Tuesday, the kits are finally catching up to Tom Brady, and I think everybody knows that. And I know you tweeted out that James White on Tuesday said, We all know in this locker room on offense we've got to do a better job of protecting our quarterback, protecting Tom Brady. And my question to you, Mike, is where is that improvement going to come from? Well, it has to come from all over, and it's not just one thing. And, you know, you can look at it. Whenever you see sack numbers rise, a lot of people tend to go right to the offensive line. And and that's understandable because there have been times where the offensive line has – not protected very well but there have been other times when you watch it drags where they have and maybe it's the receivers 
that didn't uncover fast enough. Maybe it was a back who didn't make the, the blitz pickup that needed to happen. Um, you know, so maybe it was Tom Brady not seeing what he needed to see and holding on to the ball too long. That's happened at times, too. So it's not one thing. It's actually a combination of everything I just mentioned, and, it's, and that's why it's everyone that has to raise their level of play, you know, for them to bring these number of hits down because if this continues, it's hard to imagine he'll be able to make it through the whole year. Yeah, I, I totally agree, Mike. I mean, I don't think that, you know, there's, there's no way, not even Bill Belichick, we, he would acknowledge that this simply can't keep up. And, of course, news broke on um, Tuesday that uh, Brady suffered a sprained AC joint in his non-throwing left shoulder. He has gone through this before uh, in his career, as you know, Mike. Um, And today, or I should say Tuesday, was a maintenance day for Tom. He was not out at practice on the first day of practice uh, for the game at MetLife Stadium this coming Sunday against the Jets. Um, Of course, the team doesn't have to put out the injury report until Wednesday. Um, But now, I guess for you... uh, question I would have, Mike, is, you know, with all of these hits piling up, and we all know his reputation is Gumby, what can Tom do? What can he do to kind of protect himself? Because you know him as well, well as anybody. Yeah, yeah. I mean, w- what can he do to protect himself? I mean, at times, I would say, don't run. You know, there was one play in the red zone against the Buccaneers where he tucked it and ran and subjected himself to a hit. And that probably was a decision, you know, where he talks about and says, sometimes, you know, you got to know when the journey's over and throw that ball away. You know, so I think that's that's part of it. And look, you never want to take away the aggressiveness that he has. But I think that's one thing I would say. Another is don't be afraid to run the ball. And that's not always necessarily on him. Maybe that's Josh McDaniels. You know, they... I. You know, they can run the ball more and put him in fewer situations where he's subjected to those hits. Of course, there have been times where the games have been out of their control and that they have had to throw it, and that's one where you just live with that, those results. But in, against Tampa, for example, I thought they ran the ball very well when they decided to run it, but they didn't run it as much as I thought they could have to possibly limit those hits and give the offensive linemen a chance to settle into the game and, you know, maybe establish themselves a little bit more. So those are a couple thoughts that come to mind, Tragsy, on that. So, uh, but Mike, you were on the conference call uh, with all of us when Bill was asked a couple of weeks ago about the hits that Tom is taking. And you remember his answer, uh, the sarcastic, dry, (laughs) droll sense of humor that Bill can show is we're not going to run the ball 70 times you think that'd be a good idea and you know he obviously knows that people are seeing Tom getting hit and they automatically think they're not running the ball enough and I think what was your read when you heard Bill say that what was your read on on his answer there well I think the first thing I looked at was the context of the the question which was you know how concerned are you with the hits and I think it sort of set him up for the idea of, uh, as if to say, well, you know, to let him to let him uh, open the door for his for his quip there, because look, they're they're not going to not throw it, obviously, but you know what, they could throw it a little bit less, like, and 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 that's really what it is. So I don't think I didn't read much into it, Traxy, other than you know he might have been in a little bit of a punchy mood that day because they had lost the day before to Carolina, if I'm not mistaken. And, you know, sometimes um, Bill's mood is based on the result of what we saw the day before, and that's probably what I would put in that category. Now, and I know we have talked about this, Mike, uh, you know, off air before, if you will. Um, When Bill and, and the Patriots lose, how you get information and how you ask Bill a question, um, there's an art to it. Would you agree? <laughs> yes, and sometimes and sometimes that doesn't even matter, you know? Right. Um, oftentimes, and I think we, you and I have talked about this a lot, is um, we I, I sometimes like to write down exactly what I'm going to ask them yep. before I do the I same. Do it. Um, yeah, just so I can think it out. And, and it also actually helps be prepared because you're on those calls, and sometimes, 
you know, you're up and it's just you, you know, and um, so you want to be prepared with multiple topics and, and how you're going to ask those those questions. You know, Mike, and, and I've said, I've talked about this with Tom Curran, Jeff Howe, um, Kevin Duffy, we've all brought this up, and Phil Perry, for instance. Um, I think one of the keys on those calls is you have to show Bill that you pay attention to details in the game. I know, Mike, you do, because you're one of, and people who follow you on Twitter certainly know this during games, you are as meticulous as they come when it comes to taking uh, snap counts, uh, and, and you try to get as many accurate uh, depictions of playing time and what it means in the context of the game and you have to show Bill that you're paying attention and you know I guess that leads me into to this question to you Mike is when did you start doing that meticulous snap count taking yeah that was I you know I don't I want to say it was back in like the mid 2000s I think I was just I, you know what it was Traxy it was it was like a, a frustration with, you know, you'd ask a question and and you would be contingent on like what you know what the answer was, you know. So you'd say, hey, how many, you know, how's this guy playing or whatever? What'd you do on this play? And a lot of times, you know, you'd be relying on the people that you're asking to give you the answer you needed, and um, it's. I, I remember thinking to myself, well, maybe maybe I can focus on something that is more black and white, more absolute, more of a, well, this is non-negotiable. Like, right. I don't need to ask you, um, you know, why wasn't, uh, you know, Dwayne Allen part of the plan uh, when I can actually say, well, he only played nine snaps. He wasn't part of the plan, you know, and so it's, it just gives, it just, it's, I think that the point of it that I was trying to, to get at when I decided to do it, and I think I stumbled into it in like a preseason game, was the idea of like trying to find the absolutes, the, the things that um, you can't argue with because it's there's so much in football tragedy that's mm-hmm. like left up for interpretation. Like you might watch a play and you might see one thing and I might see something totally different. And you know what? That's sort of the way it is but you can't argue with a black and white like this player like david harris is a good example the linebacker like he's only played seven defensive snaps so you know this when when they're going to play the jets a lot of people are asking well what's happening with david harris well he's only played seven snaps like obviously it's not going right you know something has gone wrong well we don't necessarily know what it is like by that number is so black and white that it's a. I, I feel like it's a powerful, you know, powerful uh, statistic, powerful tool to to support what you're talking about. This episode number two sixteen of Pat's Beat with ESPN Boston's Mike Reese, sponsored by Greats, makers of the all time Greats classic, stylish, and comfortable sneakers sold at the great price. Greats is Brooklyn's first sneaker company. They sell all the Greats. Uh, it would be classic styles made the best for less. They also have a wide selection of men's and women's shoes, versatile styles suitable for any occasion, tons of different colors and materials to choose from, and their best sellers include the all leather royal lace up and the Worcester slip ons. I have a pair of greats. They're white, they're leather, and they feel fantastic. I can wear them to the Patriots practice or a Patriots game. Have done so already. I certainly advise you to check those out along with lots of other styles at greats.com become a satisfied customer like yours truly we've got a special deal for our audience save 15 percent on your first order with our offer code trags so go to greats.com that's greats g-r-e-a-t-s dot com and be sure to enter t-r-a-g-s to save 15 percent at checkout greats also believes so much in their shoes they offer a no risk return and exchange policy to guarantee that you might or that you get the right fit in a style you absolutely love that's greats.com use our code trags and save 15 percent we thank greats for sponsoring the podcast back to mike reese of espn boston and you provided the perfect segue mr reese into my next subject and that would be david harris curious case to me mike because 
you know, in the last several years, in his years with the Jets, Bill Belichick raved about him, uh, about the communicator that he is, the heart of the Jets linebacking core, the heart of the Jets defense. And obviously, Bill really respects him quite a bit. Um, but as you alluded a couple of minutes ago, uh, to, he's only played seven defensive snaps, played um, two against Kansas City, one against New Orleans, four versus the Texans, was inactive against Carolina, and was active but did not play against Tampa Bay. I question to me, and I know you did break this down um, on ESPN Boston uh, this week, but why is he not playing on the field? Yeah, you know, there's a couple of factors. I think first and foremost is, is his foot speed or lack of foot speed. And he reminds me a little bit of when the Patriots had Brandon Spikes on their team and – um, uh, you know, a slower player and who's probably more of a run first player. And so, you know, they've, they've played more pass based packages, which is sort of what they always do. Right. Um, uh, but you know, so I think that's part of it. But then I think even when they played the run first packages, he hasn't been in there, which tells me that they view Kyle Van Noy, Alandon Roberts, Dante Hightower, and maybe even Marquise Flowers as a better option than him. And, that's surprising, and my sense is when they signed him, Tragzy, they were like, look, do we really need him? No, but linebackers, there's not a lot of them out there. We're not sure how this is going to go with a Landon Roberts, who struggled a little bit in the Super Bowl, so they were protecting themselves. And maybe in a credit to a Landon Roberts, you know, maybe that's the answer, Tragzy. We don't know for sure, but maybe he's just outplayed him. You know? And you, know, you see a Landon Roberts, he's a pretty effective uh, blitzer. You know, his run blitzes up the middle create some disruption at times. At other times, they create opportunities for the opposition for bigger plays. But it seems to me they're more comfortable with that than what they would get out of David Harris. And, you know, didn't see that one unfold in that way, but that's um, that's the way it has to this point. Yeah, and, and I understand all of that, Mike, and that's certainly, it's not, it's just not disputable. It's the facts of the facts, as you like to say. But last year he played at 899 defensive snaps, two, two years ago, 973, and just to drop, fall off a cliff. And I, and I understand it's the NFL, and sometimes this happens with defensive players, especially, you know, with the NFL so pass oriented, I get that, but it just seems unusual to me for those numbers to drop off. And the other factor uh, that I know you also wrote about is special teams. There, he he played some significant special teams with the Jets, none at all with the Patriots. None at all here, no. And and then you look at it from the perspective of you know he um, they traded for Marquise Flowers, giving up a seventh-round pick, which if they felt like David Harris could do it, they probably uh, wouldn't have done that. They promoted uh, Mar- um, Gino Grissom from the right. practice squad. Um, so, I mean, those are decisions that, I mean, it's just hard to argue. You know, it tells you what they think of them, you know. So, uh, just surprising, Tragzy, and, and I think not. Don't don't feel great about it from a standpoint of, like, this is a... Uh, clearly a respected veteran who is doing everything you could ask for, you know, and just sort of feel bad for him that this is the way it's unfolded, you know, in this situation. But I, it, I also know that, Bill, he it's not often that he will ever keep a player, um, even if it's a veteran he respects, without him having some type of role or some type of contribution. And I'm just wondering if there's some type of contribution he's making behind the scenes that, that we don't see. It's, it's, it is possible. You know, it's possible. At the same time, Tragzy, I'm, I'm a, a believer that it's hard to truly lead when you're not playing. Mm. You know, like, yep. yeah, you can be a sounding board for guys, and I'm sure there's a lot of value to that, you know. But I, I think that only goes... For me, that only goes so far, you know, when um, it just only goes so far, you know, that's sort of, that's, that's my thought on that, you know. What did you think of this team, Mike, when it was in camp versus where it is now? Well, you know, I thought, I thought they'd be better, you know, than what we've seen to this point, and that doesn't mean that they won't be, but I've been a little surprised at some of the penalties, some of the undisciplined play, um, also, realize it's a process and got to give them some time 
to figure that stuff out. And, um, you know, I always look at Bill Belichick coach teams and say they generally do get better as the season progresses. What is it you like covering the most about uh, the Patriots, Mike? Well, the high level of football. And, you know, we take it for granted sometimes. But when you look at some other teams around the league, Tragsy, uh, <laughs> they don't play the same high level of ball. And to have a, you know, pretty good seat for uh, watching, arguably, if not uh, inarguably, the greatest quarterback of all time in Tom Brady. I mean, what's not to like about that, right? And they often say with the Bill Belichick coach teams that this is like going to get a Ph.D., in football if you're going to play there if you're going to cover the teams and uh, definitely appreciate uh, that part of it as well fantasy football fans listen up if you love fantasy football then you need to try my new favorite app draft it's weekly fantasy football but not like the other guys on draft you play real live snake drafts with other people just like in your season-long league here's how it works it's a draft that lasts for just one week and there's no management just set it and forget it. Once you're done drafting, that's it. No trades, no waiver wire. Draft even takes care of last-minute injuries for you. Draft starts every couple of minutes, so you can join one right now. And the best part, play for cold, hard cash. Drafts start from just $1, so there's a draft for everyone. No salary caps. Play in a real live snake draft, just like you play with your friends in a season-long league. Come and join me on Draft today. Download the app at any time. Just search Draft in your app store and join a game in minutes or play right from your computer on PlayDraft.com, whichever way you like. For a limited time only, all new players get a free entry into Draft when you make your first deposit, but you have to use my promo code TRAGS. That's right, play a real money game for free just for using my promo code TRAGS, T-R-A-G-S, on your first deposit on Draft. Just search Draft in the App Store or go to play draft on, uh, go to PlayDraft.com and play for free with the promo code TRAGS. Once again, speaking with Mike Reese, the excellent, outstanding ESPN Boston reporter covering the Patriots, and Mike you have a feature that uh, you do on a regular basis, the journey to the NFL. And this, I think, gives you as a reporter uh, a chance to sit down with guys, and I've seen you do this in the locker room, where you just chat football, but not just the X's and O's. You kind of get an idea of where certain players, how they, as the title would suggest, how did they get to the NFL? What do you like about doing that? Well, I always like it, you know, tragedy for a couple of reasons. One, it, it sort of, you know, um, get lets you get to know a player and start to build a relationship with them and, you know, learn stuff that you wouldn't otherwise know. You know, you're in the locker room and you see what happens. A lot of times it's one big group around one player and it's specific questions about that week's game or something else or a big hot topic that's making news, you know, around and... This is a chance to maybe create a little more of a personal connection and at the same time introduce fans and the readers to the player, um, you know, and maybe um, expose them to something they didn't know. So, like, most recently, one that I did was on undrafted rookie tight end Jacob Hollister, and as I'm listening to him, you know, track me, I'm learning a lot of stuff that I didn't know. So just taking that 10, 15 minutes in the locker room, oftentimes I feel like is sort of like a win-win-win. You know, it's a win for the readers. Uh, they hopefully like it. It's a win for the player. It's a chance to, you know, let people know what they're all about. And then it's a win for the reporter, you know, because he's learning more and also, you know, hopefully um, building a relationship with a player in the locker room that he'll be talking to, you know, down the road as well. Speaking of Jacob Hollister, it's a great story, but I got to tell you, the hits he took in that first preseason game against Jacksonville and to hold on to the ball, I guarantee you that made an impression on the coaching staff right out of the gate. Well, his toughness definitely did, and and there's no doubt about it. And you can see that he's building the trust, you know, with Tom Brady as well. Tony Romo made a comment on the CBS broadcast in that game about how, you know, it seemed like Hollister was having that trust, and it was almost like you listened to it and you were like, oh, seems like that's like maybe, 
you know, maybe he knows something there, you know, or something like that. Or maybe, you know, he, he sees something with Dwayne Allen, the difference. And so that sort of that sort of caught my ear a little bit when I was watching the game over again. And I think Jacob Hollister is definitely one of the surprise stories of, of you know, one, making the team, and two, now, you know, he's been active and, uh, and getting some targets from Brady. That one pass that Gerald McCoy batted down in that Buccaneers game looked like Hollister was, uh, was open on a crossing route, yep. and they almost had that big connection. I, I, by the way, you know, and I was down there as well, um, and I couldn't, I was very surprised Tampa Bay stayed with the Patriots as long as they did in that game, and um, I just I had this uncomfortable feeling, Mike, that they were allowing Tampa Bay to stick around, and they just haven't been able to figure out that killer instinct yet that you've seen with so many uh, Brady teams. And that was kind of actually the point I was getting at, um, you know, on the conference calls uh, on Tuesday, asking Bill about the you know the two rookie safeties uh, of the Jets that they'll be seeing this week, and wondering if Tom Brady can attack them. Do you think he will? Well, I do, but I do think that they need to balance things out, Traxy, and, and run the ball a little bit more, you know, but I, I do. I think I think that that's right now the strength of their offense, which is, you know, the passing game and getting the ball down the field to Cooks and Hogan and Amendola, obviously, as a third option, and Philip Dorsett has made some plays as the number four guy. So, you know, I, I think just to build off the point you made as to how the Buccaneers hung around a little bit, you know, I had two stories ready to go at the end of that game, you know, because we always try to have a story ready right for when the game ends. Yep. And the first, you know, the first was how the defense, you know, improved and held on to help them win just barely. And the second was, you know, like this is the characteristics that you see from a bad team, you know, uh, too many penalties, um, undisciplined play, and... You know, like, so that's how fine the line is right now for this team. And, uh, you know, I sort of mention it because you don't want to just sort of base it on results and say, oh, everything's all great, they're 3-2, and or every sky is falling there, whatever they are, 0-5. Like, you know, these games, two of these games have been decided on the final play, Houston and um, Tampa Bay, right? So, I mean, they could be, technically, they could be 1-4, and or they could be four and one. I guess you could say, you know, if things had turned out differently, um, you know, in the uh, the Carolina game. I got to tell you, I've never seen back to back roughing the passer calls, and the fact oh, that <laughs> the fact that that led to a field goal, and if <laughs> Nick Folk didn't have, you know, a horrific game, Patriots likely lose that game, Mike. That's right. That's exactly right. And 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 that's the thing. I mean, we lose sight of sometimes is you know as they've been racking up wins and you know win after win over there um you know the time under belichick a lot of these games you know over the years have been decided by one or two plays and you almost take it for granted because they make it look so easy but um you know steven goskowski 12 for 12 first first to start of the year on field goals and i know you know he missed one extra point but think about how some people were calling for his job you know, not too long ago, because he went through a rough patch. I, you know what, Mike? Season. Not to interrupt you, but I don't get that. I mean, you're, you're talking about one of the most consistent kickers in the National Football League, and to expect a kicker over what his first year, right, was 2006. Is that right, Mike? That's right. right. Yeah, 2006, and this is 2017. So there's 12 seasons with one team, and. You know, obviously, he doesn't keep it. How many times have we heard Bill Belichick praise the consistency and the production of Steve Guskowski? A lot. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They've stuck with him. And I think one air, another area that we oftentimes overlook is the kickoff game and the kick, you know, how he can pop the ball up and create opportunities for the return uh, coverage, uh, kickoff coverage team to make plays, you know, in that aspect of the game. So. Uh, he's a weapon for them, and, um, you know, they stuck with him. And, and like you said, you know, you didn't get it. I, I understand it because, you know, sometimes when you see these extra points not made, it can get frustrating. But if you're going to replace him, like, who are you going to replace him with? It's like, look at what happened with Tampa Bay, right? right? I mean, with Nick Folk. Like, now they're looking for a kicker, and it's like, you don't know if what you have now is better than what you had. Like, Stephen Guskowski is one of the better 
kickers in the game. So you just ride it out with them. And, and to their credit, they have. Mike, really a pleasure talking with you. Uh, it's been uh, just an honor working the beat with you. I think you know that, uh, Mike Reese, uh, yeah, how much I admire your work and uh, just been uh, outstanding uh Covering your work, uh, you know, following your work and us also working the beat with you. Stay with CLNS all day on game day, starting with the CLNS Media New England Patriots pregame show with Alex Barth. That's a half hour before every game. Then you can catch the postgame show with Marvin Ezon and Mike Molino live after every single game on clnsmedia.com. Subscribe to both on iTunes and Stitcher. And now YouTube also get... Uh, daily team updates on the Patriots Newsfeed podcast with Tyler Trudeau, also available on the CLNS Media New England Patriots postgame show feed, available again on iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, and the CLNS Media mobile app. Thanks again for downloading today's Patriots Beat, episode number 216. We want to th- once again thank our outstanding guest, the one and only Mike Reese from ESPN and ESPNBoston.com. Of course, you can follow him on Twitter at Mike Reese, M-I-K-E-R-E-I-S-S. Right, Mike? (laughs) You got it, Mike, and thanks for having me, and I feel the same way about you. I really appreciate you, and thanks so much for having me on. You got it, Mike. You can also give us a follow at Patriots underscore Beat and CLNS Media. You can give my own personal account a follow at Trags, T-R-A-G-S. Today's sponsors were Draft and Greats.com. For Patriots content manager Mike Alonghi, CLNS Media executive producer Larry H. Russell, the founder of the network Nick Gelso, thanks to everyone who tuned in. This is Mike Petralia, and this is the Patriots Beat Podcast powered by CLNS Media. What's going on, Pass Nation? This is Marvin Zahn of the CLNS Media Network, and I'm here to tell you right now to check out the CLNS Media New England Patriots postgame show hosted by myself and my co-host, Mr. Mike Nice. And live on CLNS Radio immediately after every single pass game, call in at 929-477-2386 toll-free to get your voice heard and contribute to the host breakdown and analysis of the latest Patriots contest. We also got the stars and sorries of the day, Twitter posts for the plays of the game, and everything else that is going on with the five-time Super Bowl champion. Subscribe to CLNS Media New England Patriots postgame show on iTunes and Stitcher. And the best way, download the free CLNS Media Network mobile app for on-demand listening anytime, anyplace, anywhere.